Okay, so cardiac anatomy, the basics. Um, there are four valves, the uh, mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, the aortic and pulmonic valves. Uh, and you'll notice that those are paired up together, and they're paired up because they really are sort of the, uh, the right and left counterparts of one another. So when, so both of those are gonna be, both of those paired valves are gonna be open at the same time. They're both gonna be closing at the same time. And generally pathology involving, you know, one of them is gonna give you a similar sound uh, similar type murmur uh, for both of them. So we're going to pair those up together. Um, the mitral valve separates the left atrium and left ventricle. The tricuspid valve separates the right atrium and right ventricle. The aortic valve separates the LV and aorta. And finally, the pulmonic valve separates the RV and pulmonary artery. So this is, this is uh, the foundations are really important. Um, okay, so in terms of the cardiac cycle, uh, during systole, the ventricles are contracting at that time to eject blood into the two circuits. Uh, the LV is going to eject blood into the aorta and the RV into the pulmonary artery. And so obviously in order for that to happen, the aortic and pulmonic valves should be open. They should be wide open. The gate should be open to allow blood to flow through them. At the same time, the mitral and tricuspid valves should be closed because you don't want to eject blood backwards into the atrium. You want all of the blood to go forward into the aorta and into the pulmonary artery. During diastole, the exact opposite is true. So at that time, the ventricles are relaxing and accepting blood from the atria. So as you might imagine, the mitral and tricuspid valves should be open at that time to allow blood to flow across them into the ventricles. And then the pulmonic and aortic valves should be uh, completely closed during that time. So the beginning of systole is kind of marked by closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves. Uh, you get isovolumetric contraction of the, of the uh, ventricles, and the pressure then uh, exceeds the pressure in the atria, and that triggers closure of the tricuspid and mitral valves, and that creates S1. Um, and then uh, at the end of systole or beginning of diastole, uh, once the pressure in the aorta and pulmonary artery exceed the pressures in the LV and RV, then the pulmonic and aortic valves close and that creates S2. So in between S1 and S2 is systole. In between S2 and S1 is diastole. It's very important to understand kind of where you are in the cardiac cycle. That's 80% of it. If you could figure out, okay, as you're listening to the patient's heart, which one, what, you know, what is S1, what is S2, in between is systole, and then in between S2 and S1 is diastole. It's very important. There are two basic types of valvular lesions, okay? You can have stenotic lesions or regurgitant lesions. And uh, so in terms of stenotic lesions, this really affects valves that, that are open, should be open. The gate should be wide open. And there's some lesion or some uh, issue, calcification or whatever, that's causing blockage of the gate of that valve. And so uh, as the blood is ejecting through it, it's going to create turbulence. And that turbulence is going to create a murmur and eventually it's gonna create problems for patients. Um, and uh, on the other hand, regurgitant lesions affect valves that should be closed. When the valve is completely closed, no blood should be flowing through it at that time, but if there's an issue uh, where the valve is leaking, then you're also gonna create turbulence at that time, create a murmur, and then also additional heart problems for the patient later on down the road. Each of the four valves can, can be stenotic or regurgitant. So that's an important concept. So each valve can cause a murmur, in, or there can, you know, each valve uh, can have a problem which will cause a murmur in systole or diastole. So in terms of the aortic and pulmonic valves, which we'll pair together, um, again, they should be wide open in systole. So a stenotic lesion of, of the valve at that, uh, during that time will create a murmur in systole. So aortic stenosis, pulmonic stenosis will create a murmur in systole. Whereas uh, they should be closed during diastole. So that's where you get, if you have a regurgitant problem with those valves, aortic regurge or pulmonic regurge, uh, you'll get a murmur during diastole. The opposite is true for the other two valves. They should be open in diastole because uh, that's when the blood is flowing from the atria to the ventricles. So if there's a partial blockage of those valves during that time, stenosis, you're going to get a murmur during diastole. And if they're, uh, they should be closed during systole, so if there's a regurgitant lesion involving those valves, it will create a murmur in systole. Does that make sense? So each of the valves can create a murmur in systole and in diastole, depending on what type of lesion it is. <laughs>